you circled your name, you want to speak, and I'm going to go with uh, Bill Boyle first. You must have been here a long time, Bill. Thank you. Hi, it's Bill Boyle. Uh, I'm in Cloverfields, and uh, I also represent Cloverfields. I'm on the board there. And a couple people have asked me about if there is a possibility of getting some kind of a pass to put in your windshield to have the guys move the trucks. Well, that, that, that's a, that's I, a, I, heard, I heard what you said on the, the initial thing about yeah, yeah. it's one for all. You know, yeah. Everybody's got to do the same thing. Yeah. But this is the island. Correct. We're here. Yeah. And folks need to get on the bridge. Yes. Instead of going back four or five miles to get in the same traffic with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's just my, yeah. that's, that's right. my point. Un understood. I, I have two points. So, okay, well, let me, let me answer your first question. Okay. Uh, your first question is, it's the same idea I put forth in 2017 for the 2018 plan, and you just cannot do it. You, you can't close it for one. You can't, it, because it's federally funded roads, and the state will lose their funding for roads if, and it's illegal. They have every bit right to ride on Route 18, the state road, as you do. So believe me, it, that would be a beautiful thing. But keep in mind, you're talking about something in closing. When you close a ramp off, and somebody drives up that ramp, and you say you can't, you can't get down this road. Where are they going to go? They're going to back down onto the highway. No, no. I mean, it, it's a lot of signage, and it's something you just cannot do. It was not getting on, not staying on 50 for a pass. People that live down Route 8, both ends, they're not on 50. They're just trying to get on the bridge. Correct. So and their, their access, okay. their access will be to turn right on okay. 18. All right. Yeah. yeah we, you know, and if this doesn't work in, in, in two or three months, we'll try something else. Okay, second, yeah. second point then, uh -huh. uh, you're telling people to stay off of 18, but then down at Easton you have a huge sign that tells everybody what the delay is on the bridge. Can you get rid of that sign? That sign actually helps, and I'll oh. tell you why. Because when you get up to that sign, and you, maybe you see red lights, but you can't, you can't gauge, is that traffic moving or is that traffic sitting still? To tell somebody when they come, for instance, past Nesbitt, where one of the signs are, it's going to take 20 minutes to get over the Bay Bridge. That's going to be a lot quicker than getting onto Route 18. It could very well take them an hour in, in, when it's all jammed up. Well, originally, though, when you see the sign, you start looking for alternatives, meaning people not from the area right. who don't know the area. Mm -hmm. As soon as they see a delay, what's my alternative? And 18 is the alternative. But now, if you have the other... Well, uh, conditions in place. Thank great you. point. So this is phase one. Phase two will, will take us to the Kent Narrows, and phase three will take us all the way to Nesbitt Road. Okay. And, and those are ramps that we could totally close down. Absolutely. Okay. So when we get to those 17-mile ones, those 14-mile ones, that's when we can actually close the entire ramp down and keep them on the Route 50. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm Loring Mills. I do live down Route 8. Mm -hmm. I've been on Kent Island for 33 years. Mm -hmm. I do understand and appreciate the effort that you're trying to apply. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it appears there's a tunnel vision here. You're ignoring one of the important aspects of the community. You've got two natural barriers that can help you, Kent Narrows and Cox Creek. And if you look at those carefully and use them as part of your plan, you will see that you can provide a better approach than you're looking at now. And I encourage you, if you as you look at these further programs, uh, I, I view that you're really putting a rose on a pig right now. But there is something better that can be done. And I wish that you would open your view and take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm uh, Adrian Onetto, and I I live way at the end of Kent Island, so of course this has impact. First of all, I do want to thank you for doing this town hall. Already it's been informative, it's been helpful. I wish that you had done this town hall several years ago, when you still were considering different options. Maybe some input from the community may have changed some of the alternatives that you were weighing. Um, one thing I will say, we moved from Fairfax, Virginia. A very common feature of people who moved to Kent Island is that they never considered moving over the bridge, but Kent Island is the first exit. And so those people who are still working 
in Fairfax, like us, in D.C., in Montgomery County, decided Kent Island is a very, very beautiful place to live, and in terms of traffic, it's an option, because we get over the bridge and we're home, and we can get on the bridge quickly when we have to go to work or go to these other more distal destinations. So it is a big impact, mm -hmm. and I do want to say we drove it several times during the test period. It is a 20-minute detour. I just have to tell you, it takes longer to get to Castle Marina Road because there is a, you know, more people doing that. And then once we get on the Castle Marina Road, it's another 10 minutes to get to the part of uh, Route 50 where we would typically get on to. So it, it is, it's more than a little inconvenience, right? It's a big deal. Um, you tested one option last year, and I know you have some t statistics about the results of that. I guess I would have liked to have seen, and I still would, before you marry yourself to this one option, what about keeping the Route 8 left turn open and simply close Duke Street and Castle Marina Road? Let's see what that does. So, Weigh it, try it, mm -hmm. and Understand. see if it solves. Understand, but Route 8 is the trigger for Waze, Google, and all of those navigational devices. Like the gentleman came up before and said, get rid of this message board. So if you come around that bend, the message board says it's going to be 30 minutes. You look down and Waze says, 18, uh, 18 is open at Route 50, get on 18. We're trying to stop traffic, beach traffic, from getting on our side streets so that Queenstown, Graysonville, and Chester can get to the grocery store, the hardware right. store, or wherever they right. need to go. I understand. I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm supplementing what other people have said. Just mm -hmm. before you marry yourself to this, before you, you know, try and say, oh, look at all the wonder, try some of the other options mm -hmm. that do not impact the Route 8, Route 8 people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was not aware that the Route 18 exits are controlled by the state of Maryland or the federal government. State of Maryland. State of Maryland. Right. So they're refusing to give you access to block any exits off of 18 for people that live off of Route 18. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? I, 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 can you say that again? <clears throat> you're saying the state of Maryland is forbidding you from blocking any of those exits for people that live on Route 18 for any beach traffic to go on there, but it's illegal. Correct. It's illegal to allow county residents to use Route 18, but not traffic going through the county, correct? All right, well, <clears throat> did you know that, that Kent Island from Love Point to Lighthouse Point is 15 miles long? Mm -hmm. From Route 8 to Queenstown is only 12 and a half miles long. Okay. You have 25% of the entire Queen Anne's County population mm -hmm. lives in Kent Island and Chester. Mm -hmm. and only takes up 3% of the land mass. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take all these communities, Cloverfield, the Bay Bridge, Cove City, Bay City, Mattapique Pier, the airport, the Batsnack Park, Mattapique School Camps, the estates, Kentmore, Queen Anne's Colony, Kent Island Estates, Cove Creek, Tower Gardens, Roman Coke, Lighthouse Point, and on and on and on, and say they can't get on the bridge? They can get on the bridge. Oh, yes. but they have to go down and block the people that live in Four Seasons and Gibson's Grant at Castle Marina Road. Okay. So now you're having another 5,000 vehicles go to Castle Marina Road to get on to 50. Okay. Now, if you need to go to Anne Arundel Hospital, your, your fire rescue people are going to have a hell of a time getting on those 2.6 miles to the bridge, which was zero, backed up to get on there. And I think anybody that's paying their sanitary Route 8 assessment fee until this is resolved should think about not paying it anymore, because you guys have never told us about this. Anybody that's paying the Route 8 sanitation fee should just stop. Why not? You guys have made your decision. We can make ours. Very good. Yeah. So if I can, let me address that. And, and also the other, there was another question about the, the left turn lane and, and why that doesn't work. And we've, we put out information on this and videos on, on those questions. If it's open to left turn, it's open on ways. And so therefore it diverts traffic. And the whole, one of the whole points of this is to change the behavior 
When I moved here 30, 40 dec decades ago, I'm sorry, 30, three or four decades ago, um, you know, we had, didn't have the overpasses, we, we still had uh, the, in, the traffic interchanges that we would have to go through the stoplights. And um, the side roads were ours. Nobody knew about those because you know, people had the, the old map books that they would look through or maybe MapQuest, but you didn't have Waze or Google Maps directing you. And with that advent of the technology, the, the on-time instant redirecting, it started clogging up those, those back roads. And so if you are making that left turn exit, your phone is telling, whether you tell it to or not, is telling Google and Waze, this exit is open. And so it tells the other people who are coming over the Catanaros Bridge, hey, got a shortcut, get off on the side road. And this is a shortcut because that exit is open. So the only way that Google and Waze won't tell them to do that is that exit has to be closed entirely. If it's partially open, it's, it knows the cars or the traffic are going that way, and so it'll route people that way. And so the comment about the number of people that live on Route 8, we, we're aware of it. Like I said, I, I live down there. Um, but what we do know from the data that we're getting from the counters in the state on that exit, even when the ramp management program is not going on, is everybody who lives up and down Route 8 is not crossing the Bay Bridge every day on a Saturday between 12 and 6. It's just that, that is not, if it did, we would have huge backups, right? Just think about how the backups are at, at 9 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning when the, the, rush outs, the rush hour, Monday through Friday, right? It gets backed up past Mattapique uh, School Complex. That's not happening on Saturday at noon because everybody's not going across the bridge. But here's what we did hear from people before the rent management program, from the people in Tower Gardens, in Kent Island Estates, in Kentmore, in Cloverfields, in Bay City, they said, I can't get to Safeway and back. It takes me an hour and a half. Do something. I can't get to my job at the Narrows. Do something. I can't get to the outlets. Do something. I can't get to church. Do something. So what the people on those roads were telling us, and I understand this is not everybody, but a lot of people, and we've got a lot of positive people on this too, they have been saying, we moved to Queen Anne's County because we love Queen Anne's County, not because we were looking for a suburb of Anne Arundel County. We want to live, work, and play in Queen Anne's County. We want to go to church in Queen Anne's County. We want to go to stores in Queen Anne's County. We want to patronize the local business in Queen Anne's County. We want to take our kids to the parks in Queen Anne's County and visit our grandkids. That's what we were hearing from a lot of people before the rent management program, and we were taking that into consideration. So this idea that everybody on Route 8 is crossing the bridge on Saturday, that's simply not true. And it's not to underscore the impact that it has to those who are. There's about 350 cars that are going that route. 12 to 1, right? Not 8,000, not 9,000. So it's not to underscore it, but to make the statement that somehow we're ignoring all the people and we should stop paying sewer bills, that's hyperbole and it's just not accurate for what's going on, right? And, and we see a lot of the things that people are saying out there in social media, in other words, that just are exaggerating and not telling the truth thing. We're here to hear good and bad today, but let's keep it also to the facts about what's realistic. And, and if I hear something I think is not true, People always say politicians only hear, tell you what you want to hear. And then when you don't tell them what they want to hear, they say, they never listen to us. You know, it's like you can't win. I'm just going to tell you straight up what I think it is and what I think we need to do. Um, and it's not going to make everybody happy. And I've told you, we're not going to be able to make it good for everybody. It's going to be messy. And some people are going to be unhappy. I promise that. It's going to be. We, we, there's no perfect solution on here. Um, but this program, when the rent management program is going on, and that car accident happened, and it took 50 minutes to get from, from Route 8 over to the Bay Bridge. You know what it didn't take 50 minutes to do? It didn't take 50 minutes to drive from Food Line to Colt Classic. It didn't take 50 minutes to get from Queenstown Bank back to Bay City. It took 10 minutes. And in, in, in the summer, on a Sunday, try doing that in an hour and a half. You can't. I mean, that, that is reality for people who live on Ken Island and people like me who have lived here for, for a very, very, very long time. Um, and it's getting worse. Jim talked about you know, the Key Bridge accident. The hazmat route is a very big deal, right? The hazmats can't go through the tunnel. The Key Bridge was a route. We're going to have more of those coming down this way. And we're going to have to respond to those. And we only have one fire department that can respond to hazmat accidents in Queen Anne's County. So we got to find other ways to put resources on that. Th these are the sort of the weighty things that we have to deal with. So again, not to, not to minimize anybody's impact, but those who want to live on Ken Island and get around Ken Island, having Route 18 open is a very important thing. I'm Grace Samarco. I live in Cloverfields. I've experienced 
everything with this, this traffic. Um, it took me an hour and a half to get from, believe it or not, CVS back to Cloverfields. I had an incident where I had to be taken to the hospital and the ambulance said, can't do it. I mean, luckily it wasn't anything life shattering, but I was severely dehydrated. I was heaving, whatever. And they said, you're better off getting somebody to take you to the emergency center. We can't get across the bridge. Mm -hmm. So I respect what you're doing. All of you that are inconvenienced, think about what they said earlier. If it was your child, if it was your husband, um, now, I will add something negative, though. Mm -hmm. um, why did you do the study after Labor Day? Because that made no sense. Right. I mean, it would, I understand what you're trying to do, and I've seen, and I kudos, uh, seriously, kudos to you, because I've even seen you trying to, Gary Hoffman's team, trying mm -hmm. to block the ramps here and there just to discourage them getting right. off. Right, right. And I, 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 believe me, I researched it. I know federally funding, because then next meeting you'll have everybody complaining how come the roads aren't getting fixed right. because we have no federal funding to fix them. Right. But going back to what the other lady said in a different light, I did, when you had the study on the weekend, come up to Casa Marina. And now we've got another bottleneck because <laughs> I hate to say a lot of people here do not know how to use a traffic circle. You got people taking the two lanes trying to cut you off to get ahead. Mm -hmm. there's, I think there's going to be accidents. Mm -hmm. I bought in Cloverfields, like that other lady said, so I could be right at the bridge, because I do have to cross the bridge, not every Saturday to go to work. I do have a question, though. The people, I'm lucky I live on the north side, so I'm right there at 18. Mm -hmm. The people on the south side, I have a lot of friends that live south on Route 8. How do they get? to, you know, when they come up, will they just, are they going to get on 50 and then how do they get home? Are they going to, you can't make the left hand turn onto eight, right? How do they get home? Yes, you can. That's open. The left turn to, to get you, when you come up, if you're going westbound, the ramp, route eight ramp is open. You turn left and go home, right? That's not close. Route, the route eight ramp is if you're going north on route eight, you turn left to get on the Bay Bridge, that is closed. Hold on. And let me, let me answer your one question about why we did it so late last year. Yes, please. Because we were running out of time. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Will might be able to answer this better than I, but I think we had somewhere around 18 message boards. Signs were made. I mean, it, it took a lot to pull this together. It's not just putting a barricade up and, and, and closing a ramp. You've got to notify people. You've got to put the signs up there in advance. They're telling everybody, hey, this is going to be closed. Anybody, everyone here probably saw those signs. You need that to keep it safe. And, you know, Thank goodness there, there was no issues, but yes, we, we wanted to do it earlier in, in, or later in the season, but not that late. So that's yeah. why we're back here again today. So then what's going to happen this year? I mean, based, you're, you're kind of taking your opinion that this is going to help us. Mm -hmm. And in reality, it may not do a damn thing for us. But you're right. But then we've tried. Okay. And then and we've then tried. And the other question I have is, it's downstream, mm -hmm. but... And it's not just you all, county commissioners, mm -hmm. it's the state or whoever. They put another bridge span here. You're still going to have eight lanes or five, six lanes going into two. It's no. not going to do anything. Even on the other side, I liked what they did with yeah. the gates and all. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting, I'm a law-abiding you know, citizen, mm -hmm. and these people, the lanes closed. They come flying down the left lane. Even Where's the cops? Uh, Where's the cops? I'm we, sitting there for an hour. Right. And we we agree 100 percent with you. Yes. It's, you think that's not going to happen here? Yeah. But thank well, you for your time. Well, no, because you know we. I sat on the Bay Bridge Reconstruction Advisory Group, and in our last meeting, we made a motion that during wind restrictions, rain, or heavy traffic, MDTA puts a trooper out there at that first red X and stops everybody from cheating and going down the left-hand side because that's our number one complaint. Uh, I come home that way westbound and I just, yeah. more times than not, I'll tell you what, I almost ruined my car because I want to get over and say, no, you're not passing me. Don't do that. I, I do don't do that. I, I've done yeah. it. But, I do do that. Huh? I do do that. I try, but they, they don't care. They'll burn you right off the road. Yeah. But all kidding aside, what are you going to do or have you given any consideration what is going to happen to the people of Ken Island that are going to sit in traffic now going... Which way are we going? East on, when we have to go across the bridge, when we have to go west, 
we have to go east to go west. That's correct. How, right, but now we're gonna be, like the other lady said, we're gonna be sitting there. It's, it, it's right now, yes, it's a 10 minute That's, drive. But not when all give, that traffic is trying to go that way. Well, we're gonna find out. You, you have to, we have to try. Can you have somebody there maybe helping the mergers or something? At, at the roundabout? No, no, oh. no. We well, that, it has its own merge lane. Castle you, Marina has its own lane to merge. To get onto 50? Yes, ma'am. Yes. If they let you in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, first, uh, thank you for. Whoops. Thank you for the town hall. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot. I've got to learn right now how to put the microphone back in the stand. <laughs> so you mentioned that this is an alternative. This is one alternative that you're going to try. What's the next alternative? It goes to the, back to the Kent Narrows, enclosing one of the ramps in the Kent Narrows and um, possibly uh, an off-ramp. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the road uh, where, uh, before Castle Marina. Yeah, Piney Creek, yes. So it closes those off, and so traffic can't get off there and then come up. But didn't you say earlier that you can't close ramps because we can close it to everybody absolutely oh you can close it to, to everybody. everybody right okay everybody um is there an alternative beyond that i mean the well, the, the idea of the medallion i think a lot of people who i live in cloverfields mm -hmm. i think a lot of people who live on the island and are affected that way one of the logical things to do would be to set us apart by some kind of recognition that we are can't uh, I'm, we need to get to where we can go. I, I understand. I totally understand. But we can't say yes to you and no to everybody else. It just the law won't allow it. So then the alternatives are going to be you're just going to shut the ramps down sequentially after you get done gathering more data around the Route 8 shutdown. Correct. We're trying to keep Route 18 open so anybody in the county can traverse north-south and, and get to Route 8. Correct. Um, given that this is already planned and it's already going to happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I noticed last year, uh, n number one, it was, a, it was an inconvenience for all of us. And it, was a, it, it didn't come as a surprise because you guys did advertise it well. Mm -hmm. But is there a chance that you could put a police officer, some sort of traffic control representative at Castle Marina Circle? Yes, 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 absolutely. Agree with you 100%. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's all I wanted to ask. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for listening to us tonight. So I, I'm sort of changing the order in which I want to say these things. Okay. But it seems to me that this discussion doesn't recognize the traffic in the whole Washington Baltimore region and the fact that bailout traffic is just a fact of life. Mm -hmm. um, I lived in Northern Virginia near Interstate 95 before we moved here 21 and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And when there's a wreck on 95, everyone goes off onto Route 1, and you have backups everywhere. Right. And so I think that it is something that everyone, maybe who hasn't lived everywhere, other places in a busy area, doesn't necessarily realize. Mm -hmm. And you also can't necessarily go anywhere unfettered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is another point. When we moved here 21 and a half years ago, we had to sign a paper that said we understood that Queen Anne's County was a right to farm. And so I was well aware of traffic problems 21 and a half years ago mm -hmm. because of a coworker whose family lived here from the 1950s mm -hmm. who suggested that we may not want to live further east than Route 8 because we wouldn't want to get caught in traffic, which is specifically why we purchased in Bay City mm -hmm. to be close to the commuter bus and also close to the bridge, as an earlier speaker said. Mm -hmm. um, the other point is traffic is nothing new. It's been around forever, and it will always be around because the county has more residences and businesses than it did before. And also, until you have an equal number of lanes on the bridge as you do on the road, five does not equal six, and it just doesn't add up. Um, and so, basically, I sent an email last fall indicating my opposition to this plan mm -hmm. because it, it affects us. I understand that people may be in Graysonville 
would be benefit by the, from it, but clearly those of us who specifically purchased on Route 8 for the convenience are inconvenienced. And I had to go around in the 20 minutes mm -hmm. to make a loop, and there was actually no traffic that weekend because it was late. Right. And I won't get into the fact that all these studies really, they don't have a good counterfactual, so you can't really know what would have happened in the absence mm -hmm. of the, the pilot, so I don't believe any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I recognize illness, but I would say that this argument about safety is a bit of a red herring. Um, I, anyways, I'm just going to say that because maybe you need to think if safety is such a concern, maybe you ought to think about not volunteers on the weekend, more ambulances somewhere to solve the safety issue. But, you know, if the ambulances have to drive over the bridge, they're just getting into traffic and Anyways, so I think that those are the points that I wanted to, to make. Mm -hmm. um, as the county continues to develop and there's a lot of housing going up, it's going to get worse. And I think, you know, people just have to sort of deal with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Greg Starkey. I live in Queen Anne's Colony. I have been a resident of Queen Anne's County since 1984 sat in the meetings at Queen's Landing when they were talking about Four Seasons way back when. Mm -hmm. My comments to the commissioners and the committee is very simply safety and the ability to get to medical facilities. My wife works at Anne Arundel Medical Center and on the weekends when she's on call, this new diversion tactic that is in place is increasing her time to get to the cardiac cath lab by an additional 15 minutes from our home, best case. My suggestion is that the committee finds a workaround to get those first responders off the island and to our medical facilities to assist all of us in a more timely fashion. We're not gonna solve this big problem, but if we could take that 350 vehicles I think you referenced in an earlier comment mm -hmm. and just get X amount, I don't know what that number is, across the bridge in a timely fashion to provide medical care to our citizens, that's something that needs to be a priority. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. I'm Bob Garrett and thank you for uh, being here to answer our questions. I've got some questions and comments. Uh, I'm going to jump to the, uh, the accident. The accident's an anomaly. We keep throwing that out there, but it doesn't happen. Sort of like jumpers are an anomaly. Yeah. They happen, but that's not the reason for these ramp closures. Uh, the uh, conditioning of beach traffic to stay off of Route 18 going westbound. Most of these people are once a year, twice a year, coming from Ocean City. Mm -hmm. You are not going to condition somebody that's once a year. But we, if, will, if, have, we will take it so they, when they go to their navigation, since it's once or twice a year, and they're looking, how am I going to get around this? Navigation won't put them on 18. It'll keep them on 50, because 50 will be quicker. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, I, mm -hmm. I think it's a good point. Mm -hmm. Uh, one, gates. So, well, I guess I'm going to go with the first one. Ramp metering. Ramp metering was done at Sandy Point. What was the results? Perfect. You know, You're talking about the, the closure of the ramp that got, went on to 50 East? No. Oh. Ramp metering, which says one car can go every 30 seconds. And that was done as part of the project. So what happened, if you were in a 40-car mm -hmm. backup, you knew I've got 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so that's something, do you know, can you share with us results of the ramp metering at Sandy Point? Because we know at St. Margaret's, they've done the same thing. They've sent them back. Well, their, their, their ramp metering is what right. led them to close that ramp to everybody. And it worked. They closed three ramps, three exits. Right. And traffic never slows down. It actually picks up and you get more volume across the bridge. And that's... I mean, everybody knows, state, everybody knows that we just don't have enough capacity on this bridge. So unfortunately, the Route 50 cuts through our neighborhoods and our county, 
and we are at the mercy of that bridge and we're trying to control that traffic to keep it out on, on Route 50 and away from our communities. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ambulances. So there's too few ambulances. So we're talking about federal funding and state funding. Can they fund more ambulances? I had the unfortunate opportunity, uh, substitute teacher, to attend a school shooting briefing mm. uh, back a while. Mm -hmm. And what they told me was, there's so few ambulances in Queen Anne's, such a broad area, it could take 12 minutes or more for an ambulance to get to your house, you know, anywhere, and especially mm -hmm. here on the island. Mm -hmm. So the question is about ambulances and safety. It's, has that been looked at in terms of more ambulances Absolutely. and more staff? Absolutely. In the last four years, we've added two more full units 24-7 to, to the streets of Queen Anne's County. Okay. The, and I guess there was another question on when there's westbound delays, mm -hmm. I think anybody on Route 8 can get to Safeway in what, seven minutes? I would assume, yes. You know, well, um, I mean, from the exit. Correct. Or even less. But I don't think they'd go to Safeway. I think they'd go to Rite Aid. Well, they go to Food Line. Or, or food Line, excuse me. That's right. <laughs> food Line. Right. They're going to Food yeah. Line. In not, Target. Yeah, that's so. right. Okay. Uh, yeah, th that was my concern. Oh, one other question because uh, so we know that commuters get a discount on the bridge. Mm hmm shoppers from Queen Anne's County get a discount on the bridge. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can close, if you have to close to one, close to all, mm -hmm. but you can charge differently for traffic that says, okay, I live here, yes. I can show you my whatever, I want a different rate going over that bridge. And, and that, that's something you'd have to go through the toll authority for, for them to have the hearings and do it. No, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like dynamic tolling. It's the same situation. Dynamic, right. But, you know, again, when you talk about somebody's going to the beach once a year, possibly twice a year. They're not going to buy. They're, they're not going to care if they've got to pay $30. I mean, they're, they're, they're going on that trip. And, and dynamic tolling is meant to push the traffic instead of peaking at a certain hour to push it and level it off more. So. I, th I think if on that sign that it said, if you get on Route 18, you're going to pay $25 to get to the bridge, I think that makes a change because most people going to Ocean City mm -hmm. don't have a lot of... Uh, we, can, we can definitely ask our state, rep our, that's our, what I'd like our to state representatives that. Okay. That's, that's not a bad point, to, just to pick up who's going on the side streets and if you can charge right. more. But, we will definitely look into that. Thank okay, you. I have to thank my neighbor for that suggestion. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Hi, I also live down Route 8, uh -huh. and I also moved here 20 some years ago. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to live in the proximity so I could go visit my in laws and everything across the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sorry that we can't just make that left hand turn. Mm -hmm. Isn't there like some computer geek that can like psych out that and just make the left hand turn okay and the right hand, you know? But I guess not. No, yeah. So that's too Believe funny. me, we'd love yeah. to. We, we, we'd be happy as a clam. Yeah, but like, I, I can see where, you know, you're, you're trying to ramp things, and that's nice. And it just kind of seems like, you know, you're only doing a few ramps, so, like, we're the kind of ones that are like the guinea pigs. When are you going to do the other ramps so that we're not the only guinea pigs? As, as soon as, as we see a, a positive results is when we're going to do it. So it could take two months, could take three months, but once we see that traffic and, and, and your commutes, getting there to 10 minutes, then we're going to go back further. But again, we don't have to go back further until we start getting further backups. It's, we don't close them, you know, on, you know, we're, we're not going to say we're going to close all these ramps. We do it as needed. So, yes. Because I just know that when we did the trial run, you mm -hmm. know, all my neighbors and all the people from Route 8 are the ones going around the Castle Marine yeah. Circle of Death, you know, so there wasn't the other people, but it was, you know. Right. So, but thank you for trying. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for hearing us. Uh, my proposal is, why not have the traffic control light where 301 and 50 come together in Queenstown? Mm -hmm. You know what the maximum amount of flow is. If you control it there, I th they're going to back up somewhere. They're either going to back up at the bridge, mm -hmm. back them up over there, mm -hmm. and there's no opportunity to get off there. Right. And if, if the flow starts there, 
they have no reason to get off. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that's a very good point. So, oh, sorry, one, one more ahead. question. Yeah. So, when you start putting the, uh, closing the gates going back towards Kent Narrows, mm -hmm. are you also going to keep the gates closed here uh, on a Yes, yes, they, they, they work together. Okay. You could, did you think about that? Uh, yes, my first absolutely. So, you might not know this, but I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this, but 404 in the college red lights, that's exactly what they're doing on Saturdays, Sundays, heavy traffic. They're being monitored by State Highway all the way in Hanover, I believe, and they're controlling those lights. So you might get behind one of those lights and it stays red for three or four minutes. It's to help slow down. In our beach to bridge plan, we had those lights holding that traffic down to one lane and backing them up in the, in, there's only, I think we had like less than 600 people lived from the college light at 213 all the way back to Easton. That, that small amount compared to what we have here. And we, we would love to see us back that up, but we just can't do that. You know, the, the, the Talbot County would, would probably be in a revolution, but we did look at that to do that. But that's what those lights do. So when traffic starts to get bad, we start to see a four mile backup, those lights get held red longer to flush that traffic. So th that, that process is in the works. Two quick questions. Looking at the study, you know, from September 16th, 17th, looking at the study from September 16th, 17th, uh, September 30th, the first compared to August 19th and 20th, um, it doesn't seem like a valid study. And the only way this really would have been accurate if you did it during two weekends during the summer. So if that's why we're here now. Yes. I guess we're going to find out. Yes, now, sir. Unfortunately. Yes, sir. Um, the other question, and it's been briefly gone over is about the 350 vehicles per hour using the ramp on MD-8, okay. And you have down four miles in seven minutes, but some people saying it's 20. But here it says when operating at free flow, do we have any idea what that would be like if it's backed up? Not only backed up on the highway, but backed up on Route 8. And that's what we're gonna find out. You're 100% you're correct on those, are, uh, those assumptions. Okay, the last one is that for some people, I guess, the circles will cause confusion at Castle mm -hmm. Marina Road, not just mentioning all the people, but some people have confusion going to a circle anyway. Mm -hmm. This may just add it, but I thought it was, I thought it was a good idea to have a, traffic, um, yes. a police officer there Absolutely. to help people. Yeah, we, we recognize there might be three lanes feeding into that one out, so there, there might be some traffic halting uh, by our sheriff's department. Okay. Mm -hmm. When do you think results will be out for people to understand sometime well, we're hoping, in the Well, we're hoping within two months you'll see what the results. You'll right. feel the results. But uh, again, right now we have this plan to go through Labor Day, and then it takes possibly two months to, to compile everything and to come back to you and say, you know, we were wrong, we were right, we got to change this. And, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it so everybody can, it's palatable for everybody. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Um, I'm one of the ones I guess are in favor of the plan 100%. Mm -hmm. Since I live toward Love Point and coming down Route 18, I see it get backed up uh, by the Valero, and we can't get down past that point. Uh, so anything that you can do to keep uh, Route 8 open through the center of town mm -hmm. is going to be great. And the people who are coming from Ocean City, all they're doing is looking for a shortcut. They're right. not going to stop and help our businesses. They're not right. buying anything. All they're doing is blocking the road. And the people who are coming up from the southern part of the island, if you try and have a left turn there at the overpass, people coming uh, or going west are simply going to go down there and make a U-turn at the airport and come back up and clog up that intersection anyway. Uh, almost all the county commissioners know how many accidents there are already on the top of that bridge. Yeah. And it's only going to get worse if you don't do something to control the traffic. So I'm 100% in favor of your plan. And we are changing that light sequence at that left-hand turn. Okay. To, to help alleviate with some of those accidents. Thank you all for coming to this meeting tonight to explain this uh, situation for us. Uh, I just have one question or a suggestion. For the people who are not going to cross the bridge but only need to get around the area, would it be possible to have that right lane where it's a right turn only at Duke Street and before that, just to make that uh, an access for people who only want to get off at Route 8, so they can go back home again and maybe have a policeman there to not let people go travel that down 
to try to cut in front of the traffic on the bridge. Okay, so, so if I understand you correctly, if you're traveling westbound towards the Bay yep. Bridge, Duke Street is open. You can get off on Duke Street. You just can't get back on to 50. That's and the main ramp going... That's, well, no, that's what I'm talking about. If you just kept that open yes. so we could keep on going down, yeah. and that would help the people who are trying to get to Route 8 Correct. get home. Yes. There's that little area where you can't make the right turn. Correct. Could you open that up, maybe have a policeman there to make sure at the far end the people aren't just that's doing it point. to so get onto the bay. So you can get the right lane and get all the way up to the Route 8 yeah. exit. Very good. That's, that's a great, uh, uh, yes, yes. Or maybe even farther back, yes. really, as far as that yeah. goes. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. He's talking about where the, where the, um, the island is painted. Let him cut right through that island to keep going up there because nothing's coming back onto 50. Yeah. A lot of the folks that have spoken today, um, I agree wholeheartedly with what they say. Mm -hmm. You basically are just trading one set of problems for another. Mm -hmm. And you are trading the folks that lived on Route 8 and you're inconveniencing us to alleviate problems in the rest of the county. I appreciate your example about the heart attack, uh, but your example has one problem. If it happens this summer during this closure, the gentleman that was able to get to Anne Arundel by crossing the bridge coming out of Cloverfields will not be able to go that way. Yes, they will. We op they open up You'll, for emergency For the services. ambulance. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which, well, interesting. Anyway, because um, we've been in inconvenienced in the same way where the bridge is closed and you have to go to Easton you know, either way. So it's, it's a part of living here and it's a part that you have to basically deal with. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've lived here for 23 years, almost 24. I, like many of these people here, have not moved off of either Route 8 exit or Thompson Creek exit because I can go left and across the bridge. Mm -hmm. I commute to DC four days a week now, used to be five and it's very convenient. And if I wanted to go to Amanda Ronald County on a Saturday or Sunday, I should be able to turn left and go that way. I should not have to go forward. I mean, last, some, last September, when you had this little pilot, um, simply just going from Love Point to, to Dunkin' Donuts to get donuts after soccer practice and then get back to my house, which is in Ellendale, was ridiculous because it was, granted it was new and nobody knew where to go and you have all this extra traffic on 18, but you're just trading one set of problems for another. You're inconveniencing the folks that live on Kent Island versus the folks that live, you know, other ways. I fully support the gentleman that said the, the, the Duke Street piece, because that is true. We should be able to just travel up the exit and turn left because it's very convenient. Mm -hmm. um, that is, it would be very helpful. You have not tried turning left onto Route 50 to head west? You are assuming that Waze will send you that way or that Google Maps will send you that way. It's going to be human nature to get around whatever you propose and to do. I would hope everyone in this audience has listened to what you said about your next phase is to basically close all of the exits so that those of us on Route 8 have to go all the way to the Narrows to head no, west. No, no, that, okay, no, I'm sorry, but that's... No, no, we're, okay. no the, the then other, let's clarify. The, the, Castle Marina would stay open. Okay. Shopping center is going to stay open. So you could either one of those. You want to cut through the shopping center and get on Route 50 West? Have at it. The Castle Marina will stay open. We're, so what that's we're talking different about, we're from stopping, September. We're stopping vehicles from getting off of, of 50 West and getting onto 18, beach traffic. We don't want them using our Route 18 and clogging no, it. We I, want that for you. Yeah, I understand. I yeah. totally understand that. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's not how it worked in September. So I guess I should have prefaced my comments, apologize, mm -hmm. with the beginning with what are the changes from the pilot to what's going to happen on, on May 19th? So if you're asking me what's the, what's the yeah, difference what's now difference? From, than what we did in, in the fall, nothing. We're, we are going to, we are going to, we didn't have enough data to, to, then, to then say what anything. What you just said about the shopping center road is incorrect. What's that? You, what you just said about the shopping center road is incorrect. You cannot, you cannot get off of the shopping center road onto Route 50. Yes, you pass can. Through. Yeah. No, you can now. At this well, study. now, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, today, yeah, yeah. but on, on May 19th, yeah. when you close it down, like uh -huh. you did in September, you cannot. You or you could not have on September, whatever that Saturday was. Correct. Because correct. 
So it, it was blocked. That's different than so, than coming. And the reason and the reason that we, we are removing the blockage is because the tractor trailers going to Castle Marina were going all the way in the opposite lane on Route 18, and it was a safety hazard. Okay. Again, safety will drive this right. bus. So that's why we said we're going to have to leave the exit for the shopping center open. Right. And that may affect. Castle Marina, and until we do it and try it, we're not going right. to know. I'm not saying this is the answer forever. Yeah, well, um, that's a very good right. point. The problem right. here is, in my opinion, you guys, you have, you have tried one pilot that maybe you made one small change to this time, and you're just repeating it again for a bigger set of data. Mm -hmm. Have you given any, you need to, you need, you haven't heard from the community other ideas. Mm -hmm. some, some folks here, obviously, maybe some of their ideas won't work, mm -hmm. but there are, could be good ideas out there that mm -hmm. are alternatives. I don't think that you're looking at alternatives. You're looking at, you're basically having a hypothesis and you're trying to prove it. Mm -hmm. And you need to have some alternatives and you need to have some other opportunities for public comment. The, the pilot that happened in September did not have a lot of, you know, yes, you let us know it was coming, but there wasn't a lot of discussion prior. And then since then, I don't believe that uh, public input would support your continued pilot, mm -hmm. uh, but, you're, but you're continuing it anyway. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want to write, write on the point because there's something that we hear a lot about. You didn't talk about this. You didn't do that. And what the person is really saying is, I wasn't watching your meetings when you talked about these things for the last eight years because this was not the first time we talked about it, was when this was rolled out. J Jim has been talking about the beach to bridge plan since before I was a commissioner. Um, it's, not, it's not a new thing, it's been talked about a lot. And I, you don't have to sit around and watch commission meetings all day, it's not exactly exciting stuff, but the information is out there. Um, and if you're not getting any of the email updates from, from the county, there's, we have email alerts where we send out the information. Um, Beth, our public information officer, is pushing out lots of information. So when you say you never did this, you might be wrong. And it might be that you didn't hear about it, but we push out a lot of information. And I'm, 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 so I'm very like particular about this point because when I was running for commissioner, I heard from a lot of people of the commissioners don't do this, they don't do that. And then when I got in the office and I saw all the ways that the information goes out, I think, you know, to be, it's important that citizens are also informed. And the county has a lot of ways that we push information out. But if you choose not to read, you choose not to pay attention, you choose not to watch the meetings. She was wrong. It's a fact. Come up and speak, but I'm, I'm trying to put out the information because what I want to encourage people to do is sign up for the alerts that we have, sign up for the information that we have so that you can get, ma'am, ma'am, please, shh, one second, I'm speaking. You just we'll told you me speak. to come up and speak. I said come up and then you can speak. I, and I'm, so, I'm here, chill. so now I'm going to speak. So if, if I hear something that's not correct and there's information that's out there, I'm going to speak up and I'm going to say it. And so I'm encouraging people to get that information that we put out there. It's important. So this is something that has, this is not a brand new thing that hasn't been discussed. It has been discussed. There, there are other things that we have what pursued. What is your name? Shh. There are other things Shh. that we have pursued to try to get this. Myself, Jim, Director Haas, Dr. Ciotola, and a whole bunch of others, we went down to the legislature and we testified to try to get the law changed so that we could block the roads and have local access. We were unable to get the General Assembly to do that. We have, we have explored a lot of different avenues, and we have talked about those avenues at the meetings, which are all available on QEC TV. They're available as a podcast if you want to listen to it. So there is information out there. We are pushing it out there. This is not new information. And if there are additional suggestions, you have other ways to get information out, we're happy to hear that. And in recent years, our public information officer has doubled up our efforts to make sure there's even more information going out on social media. All the county documents are available on the website. It's, it is out there. There is a lot of information out there. And we're all available. If you've ever tried to reach out to commissioner, we're available to talk about all of the issues that we're doing. So the information is out there. Sir, let me hear your thing. All right, so first and foremost, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that you just stopped this meeting 
to lecture this woman on what she does not know and how uninformed she is when all the information is out there readily available. The second thing I want to ask is, are you an elected official and what is your name? Yes, I am an elected official. We're all elected officials. We were all introduced at the beginning of the meeting. I'm Commissioner Chris Corcorino. Okay, so I know who to vote against. That's, that's great. Um, but, I, I would mean, hope you would run. Is, I would encourage you to run. This is 100% a failure of government and leadership at every level. The fact that we are still sitting around with one Bay Bridge that's been sitting there for 50 years is absolutely absurd. And this plan is just we, as absurd. We, we have been, this group of commissioners has pushed harder than any other group of commissioners before to get a new bridge put in place. I mean, Jim has been leading this like nobody else, to, to, get, to get that the studies pushed through quicker so that we can get that replacement bridge in place. Because we agree, they're old, they're aged, they need to be replaced. We need to have the infrastructure upgraded. We need to make sure that the cars can flow through Ken Island and get off Ken Island so the people who live in Queen Anne's County are not impacted by that. Right, but, and you, we talked but what about you've it done is you've completely time. impacted all of us that live on Route 8. Okay. So I have a question as well. You yes, mentioned that, I'm with him by the way, you mentioned that the federal funding would be in jeopardy if we shut down you know, some and not all. What is exactly the number? What is the funding number? Because everybody in this room pays taxes here, yeah? Do you all pay taxes? Do you pay taxes? You pay taxes? You pay taxes? We have um, we have tons of new developments going on around here. So how much exactly is the federal government funding that would be shut down if we decided to shut down Route 8 exit? I'm just curious. In all honesty, I don't have the total for that. Can we get that? Uh, yeah, I think that's because a, that's a fair question. Because I think that yeah. looking at all of the new development, and, mm -hmm. and by the way, if you look at this room, half of these people have left. Mm -hmm. And I asked the majority of them leaving out of here, why did you leave? They're defeated because you've already made your assessment. You already know what you've already determined. I'm sorry for those that don't agree with me, but there's a hell of a lot that do. Okay. And they feel as though we're here as propaganda. You're just listening. Well, maybe not listening, but you're hearing. Maybe you're not hearing. Ultimately, what I would like to know is how much funding is it that the federal government would not give you or give this county State. They don't give it to the us. The state, yes. then. How much? Because it's a state we all road. pay taxes. It's a state road. It's a state bridge. We don't right. know. So we can only ask and we can only beg. So you don't think that we could say, okay, fine, because I know for a fact that some people in, in, in Anne Arundel County have said that, and they are not state-run roads now. Well, so I, I would I like answer. to know. I can't answer what it, I what would like to know anyway. that answer. How much okay. does it take to pay them off so that we, as community members that pay taxes here, that mm -hmm came to this county because we love this county. Mm -hmm. And now we are not seven minutes, it is a 20 minute drive to go circle back. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a valid question to ask how much money we, that we, we, we would will, lose for that state we funding. Will get you that and I also want to reiterate that several people have mentioned the fact that we're local, we're local residents. Look at Virginia, look what they did at the Dulles Toll Road. If we could do a sticker, we would all of us would be willing to pay that money to say, okay, we're locals and we can get through. And again, if that's a state issue because, you know, whatever that law is, I think it's really worth investigating because I do believe if you look at the people in this room that half of them have already left, I asked the majority why you're leaving and it's because they felt defeated. Do you not think that they're going to stay here if that if that 20 minute compute, commute down to this Castle Marina is going to turn into a 30-minute commute. They're not staying. I certainly would, would reinvestigate that myself. So anyway, thank you for, for doing this you know, presentation mm -hmm. today. But I do think that I don't think that all options have been considered. So thank you. Thank you. So there are three things that I'd like to bring up. One is what this is doing to property values and why people have moved here and the reasons why, besides the beauty and all of that. I mean, it's a major concern in terms of a financial thing. It's a number game. The lady before me raised a very good point. What is the number, that magic number, that 
would be lost in state aid to this situation. Well, and uh, so let's answer that question. It, 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 the, the dollar amount really doesn't matter because the state is telling us they're not going to go against the attorney general's uh, ruling, and it doesn't matter if it was, you know, ten million dollars or. or Five hundred thousand okay. dollars. The state has already said this is this is the parameters that we're going to stay w within. So that's not really even an option. The other point that I want to make, listening to what was said, mm -hmm. was that we're being held hostage to technology ways. Yes, yeah, you're one hundred percent. Okay, agree. I think I think that point, quite honestly, is a huge issue in this decision-making process. What I was hearing was we're being at their mercy. And I don't think that's fair to the people that are living here that we have to be a slave to Waze or Google Maps. Isn't there some kind of way to get a hold of that software companies and say, hey, you need to adjust your and, software. And that's been tried too. And we have no control over them. That's, uh, thank you, that's our frustration too. That's, that, it that, is, that's honestly. That's mind boggling yes. that, it's, that we are being held captors to a software company. Right. That, that's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why anybody should accept that. I don't know why you folks should accept that. I'm just, if it was private business, it wouldn't happen. And, it, and, and the reality is... I is, disagree. You, you cannot... You, why don't you call Google or Waze and say, I want my street removed from your maps? That's what you're going to... And I'm telling you, we've done it. We've gone to them. And the, I think the most they've ever given us was tw uh, eight... Eight hours or 12, I can't remember what it was. It was a small amount of time they closed, they, they blacked it out, and it gave us nothing. So we are a slave to the technology, you're, you're, and this is impacting. Your phone is no different. As you drive, it's pinging off the cell, to, and, and that's what they're using. Waze is using your phone to get the information to tell people where to drive. I have another idea as well. I mean, okay, so now we know that there's no way to deal with Waze and Google Maps. Basically, it's impossible, mm -hmm. which is a shame because that's actually what's driving this problem. Mm -hmm. it is. It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. Right. It is. It's a technology issue. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's training people to drive a certain way that they don't forget how to. Drive. Right, and, it, and if the stupid software didn't say it, they wouldn't be doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. I mean, that yeah. that's that's insane. That this is what is happening. Okay, it's almost like aliens are taking over, you know, come on. Right. So the other idea is to alternate. Okay, last summer we did the Route 8 closure. My proposal would be, in all fairness to those of us that live on the Route 8 corridor, to shut down a different ramp, to, step, you know, to alternate these closures from year to year so that we're all not suffering this. Um, it, it, it's an incredible unfairness. Mm -hmm. to well, the, it, it just is. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking of my property values. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? You know? And not only property values. So then there's a fourth point. When it comes to public safety and emergency vehicles and getting people, has the is there any way to air vac people yes. that are critical yes. more increase the amount of air vacing going on yes. out of the air, airport we, we, on route we, 8 we have we have that ability and we are using it yes already and of course the final thing is setting up a ferry system that would alleviate some of this as well um, you know, I just relocated from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Plymouth has a car ferry, Nantucket, Cape Cod. Why aren't we doing car ferries? State has beat that horse to death, and it wouldn't put a dent in anything. 
So I sat in when the state presented from that study. They did a study five years ago on okay. just that because uh, they were looking for alternative ways to eliminate some of the traffic. The ferries would do about 1,500 to 3,000 cars per hour. On any given weekend, we're doing 100,000 cars. So but it, it, it's still a help. You know, but it's but the, but the expense they're saying the expense is not going to three thousand cars on a hundred thousand. It's not that that's that's literally two lanes on the bridge is all you really eliminated. So they did it. It's so something. If, again, a lot of these things that we're talking about tonight that we take to the state, we have to the state has to buy in. As Jim has said ad nauseum, these are state roads we're dealing with in a lot of instances. The other thing you got to remember is. Uh, the, the, real, the, the real catalyst for a lot of this traffic is not the people that have moved to Queen Anne's County. Not, not, a, not us sitting in the room, not us no. in the North County. It's, it's the fact that areas like Ocean City, uh, the Rehoboth beaches, Delaware beaches, have ballooned in the last 10 years to where you're getting the volume that we didn't have 10 years ago. For, for just a show of hands, how many people have lived here over 20 years? Okay, 30 years. Okay, so just in, so everybody else is probably in that 10-year range, right? That has been the largest increase in traffic across that bridge in the last 50 years. So just put that in your mind, and how much that had to do to get to where we are today, to put us in the situation we're in. I've been here since 1991, and I have driven back and forth to D.C. and Baltimore for all that time. And I've never seen it the way it's been the last five years, and that's sans a couple COVID years in there. So. I'm, I agree. My commissioners, these guys, Chris and Jim, have worked tirelessly on these efforts. Um, I, I, I know this, and I agree with them. This is not, there's no perfect magic bullet that's going to take care of this issue. And this is a 10 year issue. So if you want to be here 10 years from now to say you've been here 20 years and still talking about this, this is what we're going to have to live with. And I'm not saying that it's convenient, and we know it's not going to be convenient. And hopefully, out of this pilot, when there is more traffic to get better numbers, we find some other little tweaks. And that's what this is. This is going to be a tweaking process. What they did at that pilot, I thought, was phenomenal. Like Jim said, we all did that route. And it wasn't horrible. It was a lot better than me coming from North County, and I sit in the traffic at the split for an hour and a half, two hours, just to get to the bridge to get across. So it inconveniences not only South County, but it inconveniences North County, too, because we like to go across to Annapolis every once in a while. So. Thank, thank you. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to listen to everybody, but if you could keep your comments a little bit shorter in time, we'd appreciate it, just, just so we can get everyone to speak. Sir. So a, a, a couple of points and then a question, I guess. Um, I don't, I, I'm, to, to your point, I'm, I haven't look, looked at all the data. I am curious what you define as an improvement. Is that a 5% decrease in traffic? Is that 20%? I don't know what that is. I don't really want to know that number now, but I want to know that that's made available. And... Um, when you look at the data, are you looking at the, the cars and where they're coming? Are you looking at their license plates to see who's crossing that bridge and where they're coming from? Are we Queen Anne's County? No. Uh, Why not? We, we've got, well, first off, that is a privacy issue, and you'd have to take that up with the state. Because right now, when you come through those uh, magnetic readers, they know who, wh where that vehicle's from. So why can't why can't you get access to that data independently so, of, yeah, of what so, uh, 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 of the names, just locations? T tell me what the what the benefit is. Well, then you know how much of it's coming from the beach, how much of it's coming from well, Ken what, Island, what, how much what, it's coming. What does from, that? Then, what does well, that okay, so that leads to my last point, and that is, we all know New York City, we all know the, the city of Manhattan, mm -hmm. the county of Manhattan, congestion pricing. Absolutely. Why yeah. can't we do congestion pricing on just we the can. route on just the Route 8 ramp? Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Put, a, put a reader on the Route 8 lamp, you pay $20 if you're not, if you're from far away, you pay nothing if you're on Ken Island, and you pay, I don't know what, some gradation between the two. So if you had your family and you were going to Ocean City for your yearly vacation, and it, we had a sign up that says, if you get on Route 18, it's going to cost you 50 bucks. Are you going to stop or are you going to just say? I, I live on Ken Island, so I have a Ken Island uh, registration. I understand, but you're saying that that, that that will change the pattern, and we don't think it will. We don't think that that I, will put an impact. Well, that, in, but you don't know that without checking the license plates and where people are coming from. You don't know that. The license, That's something worth pursuing to see. Okay. I mean, it works in Manhattan. They've, right. they've just started it. They, it right. took them a while. Right. But they're doing that. I right. think that would you, be You, you also difference. have to remember that we're commissioners. We're not traffic analysts. We have the state's support with all of their engineers doing right. a lot of this. So, but, but these and are I, the, understand, whoops, I understand that. So. These are the questions that you need to ask then. I mean, I'm not saying. We have. 
And, and what were the answers then? It wasn't going to make a, a difference. It was tangible. Absolutely. But congestion pricing wasn't going to make it's a difference? Working. That's out. Yeah. I'm sorry. Excuse congestion me. pricing was not going to make a difference. The, the congestion price at this time is not going to make a difference. Right. Yep. Huh? I, I don't know how they know that, but okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Gary Griffiths. Mm -hmm. I've been here uh, 26 years now, and I also drove into D.C. every day for a long time. But my question is, Ken Island is unique. It's not an average road in the state. It's Ken Island. And we're getting the, this, the rhetoric that we can't shut down the roads unless we shut it down to everyone. Well, I think our congressmen, senators, and you guys were to bring to their attention how you're going to restrict the people on up and down Route 8 and cause a lot of contention. So that needs to be taken further. The gentleman from the uh, Roads Department, somebody needs to r run with the torch and say, in this instant, there's one exit westbound that needs to be opened for the residents. So somebody needs to run with that and say, hey, I don't want to hear we can't do it. I don't want to hear that's the, the law. I want to hear Ken Island's unique, the unique situations. Let's get that ramp open. Majority of people here, that concerned them. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Barry Schwartz, and I live off of Route 8, and I have a few points. One, you mentioned earlier that we have a volunteer fire department. What if we made them not volunteer but employed people? Would that help? the situation. I know it's not an overnight thing, but it's a consideration. Yeah. Going to a paid service would probably cost the county about $20 million a year. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a fair point. Mm -hmm. You mentioned different times, like on Saturday, not starting the block until noon. Right. What about on Sundays? What Same. about on holidays where we know the traffic doesn't pick up until the afternoon? Those are great points, and that's exactly why we're doing this, so we can see if that's the case, then we will adjust those times. Absolutely. And you mentioned you approached the, the state government trying to get a law passed. We all know that it takes a lot of effort, many different legislative sessions to get ch change on the books. Mm -hmm. So you've tried once. Are you going back again you, and again? And I'm again? getting that red X next year. I'm going to get that red X, that, cam that camera for that red X. Okay. Absolutely. And the issue with legal uh, with Waze and Google Maps and Apple Maps and whatever, it's a public safety issue, one could think you might be able to get an injunction against them showing that lane, the left-hand turn, mm -hmm. say, from Route 8 onto the highway and, and as being is, a public safety issue. We're, we will look into that yet again and talk to the state because they're the ones that were in contact with, with these agencies. And I know our sheriff has reached out to them in the past also. Okay. But uh, they're just... You know, they're going to go with the data that they have. All right. And then a point that's been made a couple of times, and that is if you have an easy pass from the state of Maryland, you pay a lower fee going mm -hmm. across the bridge. Mm -hmm. Again, it's been raised, why not charge a fee to non-residents of Kent Island mm -hmm. to get off the highway before they go over the I, I, Honestly, I don't think that the, the board of the toll, the toll facility board would ever even in, uh, entertain that. Because that would show, you're showing favoritism to you and not to all. It's the same principle basically as the, the highway uh, revenue funds. We're giving you a break and, and everyone else, you got to pay. I, I don't see that that's and any I don't, different. I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea, but I, I, we'll ask. That's, that's a question you know, we can ask. Put toll gates up. Yeah. 25 cents to get yeah. off unless you have, yeah. you know, a Maryland okay. Easy Pass. Right. Or, right. Or a Kent Island Easy Pass. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I got one question about the access road where Jack Frost stand used to be. Yes. If you don't close that road up at all, you're just going to have people from Love Point taking that service route, going around Dunkin' Donuts, and getting on there. Correct. So I think you need to close that off. Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to monitor that because, again, the tractor trailers don't have enough room to get on to 18. That, and so the option might be to prohibit tractor trailers into that shopping center. So we're, that is all fluid, and that's why we're doing this. We've got to find out which way works the best. Another thing I think you should consider, 
is if the bridge is closed and unable to take the traffic, you create a parking lot or a standing lot for the cars to basically just sit there and wait for the bridge to clear off so that way our back roads will stay clear. If you remember when they were redoing, redecking the bridge and we lost two lanes, we were down to one lane westbound, do you remember how they were parking the tractor trailers anywhere and everywhere along Route 8 and in the neighborhood? So we don't want to see a repeat of that. Other than that, I look forward to the study. I'm sure other people here are going to hate me for this, but when I did it last year, I, there was that one day that I, there was an accident. Yeah. It only took me 10 extra minutes to right. get from my house onto 50. So I applaud and I'm looking forward to the study. Thank, Thank you. you. Quite a conundrum you're dealing with. Yes. Um, the, uh, I, I'd like to offer a, a small tweak to the current plan. The issue seems that the audience tonight has had the greatest issue with is the Route 8 ramp access westbound to the bridge. <clears throat> that seems to be the primary concern with the plan. If we were to, during 12 to 6 p.m., prohibit left turns from Route 18 onto Route 8 south, Waze would pick that up. And they would say, oh, you know, you're going to be diverted north on Route 8. And by the time you turn around and make you turns and you're going to add 20 minutes to your commute, you'd be far better off staying right on 50. So if we did a little tweak to the plan, that is just implement no left turns at Route 18 during your peak hours, 12 to 6, but allow the residents in North and South Kent Island to continue to have access to that ramp, you'd have a winner. Well, you, but you'd also have the same problem. You're showing favoritism to one group and not the other. Because you're, you're, you're telling me you want Route 18 to come up, turn right, go into maybe the business park and do a U-turn and then pull up and come up the ramp to get onto... I'm the, saying everyone coming westbound on 18 cannot okay. make a left turn. There's no Can, favoritism make a, to anyone. Cannot make, so where are they going? They're, the point is Waze is going to see, you, you talked about the navigation impact, Waze yeah, there, this, is going to see you cannot make a left turn there. The divert route and loop is going to add so much time to your commute, they're going to recommend not but, getting but are you, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at, are you saying to stand there and physically stop them from making a left-hand turn? I'm or, saying to use the techniques that you're using at the ramp, put a truck, Put a sign, a so, light, so no left So when this traffic turns. comes down Route 18 and it hits that truck and it won't let them turn left, where is that traffic going to go? The traffic is not going to be there because Waze is not going to divert them. Oh, no. They, 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 yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Right, but yeah. Waze does the math does the math and it calculates the time differentials and Waze is going to say this is ridiculous to make the loop and come back down. So I, I suggest that's, that's, you talk about to think pilots. About it. Have to think talk about, about it. pilots. Try it. Yeah. Well, I Put mean, some numbers I just to worry, it. I study. just worry that there's a lot of traffic that will be on 18 and it'll get to that red light and they can't turn left and then we have mass pandemonium in the neighborhoods. The reason the traffic's there is because nav tools have put them there. Yeah, but th there's also some that know the route and, and, and take the route anyways. So it, we'll, we'll look at that. I, I, I see what you're saying. We'll definitely look at that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thinking of scheduled closures of coming uh, northbound on Route 8, mm -hmm. where we want to take a left, mm -hmm. that maybe it would just be open, say, uh, it would close at 12, and maybe it would open for a window from 2 to 4 or something, so that Waze would recognize it as closed. That's a, that's, and that's not, a good point. We, we will I definitely will look into that one. You know, maybe we'll get with yes. No, I, it, it, so so we close it at 12, but we open it up at three for 45 minutes or a half an hour, and then close it back down again. Yeah, or even yeah. Uh, you know, at, at two o'clock you open right. it for an hour, and at four yeah. o'clock you open it for an yeah. hour, and it at just, six o'clock you open, and the word would get around. Everybody would know. Yes, that exactly. You know, so yeah. something easy. That's anyway. something. That's something worth looking at. Yeah, yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Yes, I, I apologize if I missed this in your presentation, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering what your metric for success is. Is it the number of cars over the bridge? Is it speed over the bridge? Is it speed along 301 and 50? All three of them. Okay. All three of them. We want to make sure that that traffic, to me, it's a, it's a success if we don't go below 35 miles an hour. 
On? It, on 50, from Castle Marina to the bridge. Constant 35 or higher. I and think then that, on the bridge? Excuse me? The miles per hour on the bridge. Oh, I, you know, we'd love to see them up there at 55, you know, but uh -huh. I'm just saying the, the volume of vehicles, people get into that bridge and they, they, they get a little nervous and they, they naturally slow down. So, okay. yes, I mean, that would be the, the, the home run for all three. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, just a brief comment again. Uh -huh. um, I sort of want to go back to address the whole issue of um, information availability. Uh -huh. So I realized that there was probably a lot of information out there and things. Um, this doesn't, this sort of addresses, I sent an email last fall to all the county commissioners and I received no response at all. Not even an automated email saying, thank you for your email, we'll be addressing this. And so to me, that seems like a common courtesy that ought to be given to the residents from their elected officials. And you're 100% so, correct, and I'm probably, I, I, I did the you. same thing, and, and I apologize. But I think what we looked at was we had such an influx, and we didn't have answers. And we need, I, to, get you, we need, need to get you answers, and that's what we, you know. I, I didn't need any answers. I mean, all I needed was, thank you, we received your email, and it could have been just an automatic thing that goes out, right. an point, automatic reply. Point taken. And so, point taken. Um, thank you. You know, she was the other woman earlier was saying she didn't have information. Well, right. I was aware, but it does seem to me that it does help your constituents to just even an automated response. Thank you. Thank you. You've piloted one solution, and you've heard probably one or two reasonable suggestions tonight. To really have the data to be able to say, this solution is the best one, why not alternate a few weekends and try it with the mixed hours, try it with the only allowing left-hand turn on Route 8? No. Those are three different things. Mm -hmm. You'd have the data to show your citizens that you listened, and you actually knew that this one solution was infinitely better by X percent than the other two. Collect the data. Yes, That's my recommendation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very, very quick because I already spoke. A town hall is a different conduit for exchanging information uh -huh. because we're not passive recipients. Right. So people do like town halls when we want to be a little bit more interactive. Yes, there's a lot of information but it's different than this kind of a form. And very, very quickly, just reiterating what others have said, Route 8 not being able to make the left turn on 50 is obviously causing a lot of angst and a lot of concern along a lot of people. Absolutely. What I was saying earlier, and I just want to reiterate it, I would like to see you split your study period. Close your Duke Street, close your Casa Marina Road, do the left turn closure from Route 8 for half the study period, and then for the rest of the study period, don't close Route 8. I would like to see those comparisons. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Well, thank you for coming out. I'm sorry we've had you t all night here, but uh, we appreciate all the input and the amount of people. We, we honestly never thought we were going to get this many people, so it, it, we're, happy to reach, we're happy to reach that many. So thank you. Have a great evening.